Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. And it is New Life Ministry Church International. We are live. We are live, you all. We are live. Amen. And we give God praise. We don't own the rights to the music getting ready here. We don't own the rights to the music getting ready here. But just know, amen. We're going a different route tonight. Amen. We're going to be talking about love. But before we go, we're going into our vision seven for the next few moments. A vision seven. Those who didn't have a chance, amen, to uh, get into the vision seven, amen, you have the opportunity YouTube and Facebook, you have the opportunity for the next 20 minutes or so to get on, amen, and uh, get in tune with what God is doing with the vision of new light, amen. We are, amen, uh, blessing God, amen. God has been blessing us, amen, and I want you all to be ready to give, amen, accordingly to the Lord, amen, and to the kingdom of God. Amen. Come on, time in. Get ready for a power pack night tonight. Amen. As we explore, amen, how to get better at love. That's our theme. But right now, we're going to take the Vision 7 offerings. We're going to be praying for your financial well being, for financial increase, for your territory to be enlarged. And so we're on the air live on Facebook and YouTube. Amen. YouTube is Bishop Fletch. Amen. So if you type Bishop Fletcher and you go to YouTube, YouTube, amen, and you will see us, amen, live, amen, live, 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 live on YouTube. And so we're excited about what God is doing, amen, amen. God is so, so good, amen. Come on, come on, share and like, amen, amen. We got to gain access, uh, and I got to see what is YouTube getting uh, Facebook, if y'all getting the feed, uh, because some tell me Facebook is not getting the feed, but we're going to find out in a moment. In the meantime, Vision 7, those who gave last night, uh, thank you so much, amen, for your giving of Vision 7, uh, honorable people, amen, amen, and we're thanking God, amen, for those of you who did that, amen. I'm going to shout out a few names that gave the Vision 7. I know Sister Lisa Dixon gave. Amen. Uh, the visit seven. Don't tell me. Oh my God. Okay. It's all right. We know several of you gave in the visit seven. Amen. We are, amen, on Facebook. So, amen. Thank First Lady. God bless you, Sister Linda Taylor. Amen. Sister Ina, uh, Sister Dion Marie, God bless you. Wanda Lee, God bless you, Sister Lisa Dixon. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. Amen. We're now on YouTube live. We're streaming live on YouTube and your comments will be seen on YouTube as well. And those of you that have not gone to Bishop Fletch, amen, uh, go there and, and type something in. Say, praise the Lord, Bishop. Let me know who you are and where you're coming from. Type something in. We can see your comments now on YouTube. Amen. Our channel on YouTube. We want to build a YouTube channel up just like our Facebook uh, family. Amen. So those of you can go over to Bishop Fletch on YouTube, go to Bishop Fletch, like and subscribe to my channel real quick. Right now, we're going to just evangelize. Go and share our life. Amen. And while you're doing that, sow your vision seven. We have a powerful vision. The Lord said he's going to enlarge our church facility, and we are saving and raising monies to do that. We are thankful for all of our church family who have given their vision seven over the last a uh, few months, just been a powerful, powerful blessing. I want to thank God for First Lady Fletcher. I want to thank God for Elder Eleanor, Elder Segarra, Mother Greer, Mother Shirley Neal. I want to thank God for Evangelist West. I want to thank God for you, Pastor Steve. I want to thank God for uh, Minister uh, uh, Monica Greer. I want to thank God for uh, uh, Sister uh, uh, Debbie Womack. I want to thank God for uh, Dr. Wanda. I want to thank God for Mother uh, Brenda Williams, I want to thank God for uh, Sister Tutu Thompson, I want to thank God for uh, 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 Wanda Lee, I want to thank God for Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith. Uh, also, we got a, a pressing issue, Sister Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith, we lost Elder Joseph uh, 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 Irwin Lee, who's good, good, good friends uh, with Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith, and uh, Elder Lee just got on with us about a year ago. He said, Bishop, you're my pastor, and so 
I'm, 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 I want y'all to uh, pray for Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith. They were very close. Amen. And um, uh, I, I want to uh, give our condolences to Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith right now and all of our Atlanta family and all those who knew Elder Joseph Irwin Lee. And you can go to his uh, Facebook page or Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith's Facebook page and you can see the write up on his passing uh, this uh, yesterday, I believe it was. And he uh, said, you're my pastor. I know I'm in the, uh, in the South. And he said, but you're my pastor, Bishop. And so we definitely want to do something for that family, for him. We're going to send some funds their way uh, through Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith. Amen. And so uh, we just want to miss his uh, involvement with us. Amen. As I believe it was cancer uh, that got him. Amen. But we know the Lord, he's in the Lord's hands. The Bible says to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. God bless you, Sister Aisha Thomas. Amen. First Lady, God bless you. Amen. So let's come on. Let's get, get going with our Vision 7, but we will revisit that at the end of our service on tonight. Father God, we just thank you for those who are giving the Vision 7. We thank you for all those who have plunged in and believed uh, of the work that we're doing at New Life Ministry Church International all over the globe, the work that we're doing. Father, I thank you as they're sowing their seeds. Amen. We thank every family, every family represented in the seed sowing. Amen. A new life. Amen. Thank you for Evangelist Grant. We thank you for uh, uh, also for, amen, uh, Sister Janetta Gaines and her family for their uh, Visit 7 Seed. Amen. We thank the Lord for uh, Sister Morris and her family. Amen. Joining in the seed. Amen. Uh, Vision 7 C. Now, so your Vision 7 right now, go to uh, Cash App, dollar sign N E W L I F M I N. Amen. Let's sow our $7. $7. So all God is asking for once a week, $7 for the Vision 7. Amen. Uh, uh, many of you, uh, several of you have already paid. Uh, you know, we didn't go on air yesterday. And what we got to do, because I'm so busy now, uh, we have to double up on Thursday. So if Thursdays, Starting today, Thursday, 6.30 to 7, we do Vision 7. Then from 7 to 7.45, we do our couch sessions. We do our Bible study or couch sessions as they are now known. Amen. So that way uh, I can make the most of my time because I'm getting very busy, but I know I have to do the Vision 7. So we'll do the Vision 7 from 6.30 to 7 p.m. on Thursdays. And then from 7 p.m. to 7.45 or thereabouts, we'll have our couch sessions Amen. And we'll still get our learning in and our growth and our and our blessings in that way. Amen, somebody. I uh, want to thank, amen, uh, Sister Ina for her Vision 7. I want to thank, um, uh, who else? Uh, I want to thank uh, Sister Yolanda Brown. I want to thank, amen, Sister Queen. I want to thank, uh, praise the Lord. I want to thank uh, Elder Anthony Avery. I want to thank Deacon Ferris. And Sister Deacon is Patsy, uh, Youth Pastor Steve and Star. Amen. I want to thank, Amen. Um, uh, all of, all of our, our leaders have been doing and the saints of God have been doing quite well uh, with their seed. Uh, Sister Dina Prosser been doing quite well. Sister Lisa Dixon quite well with the vision uh, seven seed. And, and I'm just thankful for the saints who see what we're doing with the money. We're saving the money and we're, we're getting ready, amen. When God opened the door to purchase, amen, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready, amen. I believe all the funding is going to be there, amen. But now's the time to save up. Now's the time to, guard, to raise the monies, and that's what we're doing, amen. And we will have our numbers uh, 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 this coming Sunday. We'll have the total amount that we've saved so far. So uh, at the 10... Uh, not this Sunday, I'm, excuse me, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, the following Sunday, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, the third Sunday in this month, we will have the totals thus far for our savings. So I'm very excited, amen, about what God is doing, and we're giving God praise, honor, and glory. Amen, somebody. Amen. So uh, God bless you, Sister Linda Taylor, for viewing, amen, one of my Shaw sisters, Mother Rosie Greer, God bless you. Amen. Uh, just everyone has been doing a fine job. Amen. In the seed sowing. Amen. Uh, Mother uh, Gilda, Justin, and uh, 
uh, Elijah and uh, uh, Camry and uh, also uh, Kalen have been sowing their seed, Vision 7 Seeds. We thank God, amen, for amen. Uh, 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 Sister Vanessa Bell in Las Vegas, amen. Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith in Atlanta, amen. We thank God for uh, the, uh, Patty and Steve Trim and, and some of the things that they've done uh, and, and, and giving and so on. So we, we thank God the whole, the whole across the board for what has been done. Father God, we thank you right now for the financial growth of your people. We speak miracles. You've been blessing. We've been having financial miracles. There's no doubt about it. You've been blessing us and we release it over the people right now. We release the blessing of giving. You said in 2 Corinthians 6 and 9, he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully shall reap bountiful blessing. And Father, we release 2 Corinthians 6 and 9 on the people of God. We release Luke 6, 30, given, it shall be given, pressed out, shaken together, running over, running over. Amen. Uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, y'all get ready for running over. Uh, 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 Dion, Marie, get ready for running over. Mother, uh, 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 Greer, get ready for running over. First Lady, get ready for running over. Ble get ready, Wanda Lee. Get ready, Lisa Dixon. Get ready, Sister Ina. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Get ready, saints of God. God is releasing the blessing. Your credit scores are going up. I prophesy your credit scores are going up. I prophesy you're hearing yes, amen, on those loan applications. You're hearing yes on those uh, mortgage applications. We prophesy now you're hearing yes on those car loan situations. Father, for the right uh, interest rate you, and your stocks and bonds, amen, are increasing. Your dividends are increasing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the stocks. We thank you for the investments going up, financial windfall for the people of God. We thank you for a release of settlements, stuff that's been parked in the uh, halls of justice. Now, let those settlements be released in the pe people of God's favor. And we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you for promotions. Now we speak promotions over the people who are giving the vision seven. Come on, give your vision seven tonight. Some of y'all haven't given it. Some of y'all haven't given it. Come on, sow the seed, cash app, dollar sign, N E W L I F M I N. I need somebody to type that in. Type that in. Type our cash app in and type in our Zell. Zell is Bishop Fletch at gmail.com. Bishop Fletch at gmail.com. God is moving in the finance area. He's moving, amen, in wealth, amen. I speak wealth over your lives. I speak strategy to get wealth, power to get wealth. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, 18, he said he give us power or strategies or the ability to get wealth, amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak the blessing over our lives. In the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing over all that will give the vision seven and the pledges. We speak the blessing over the pledges. We speak the blessing over the pledges. If you have a major pledge, you should. Amen. You should make a pledge and a vow to the Lord to help God build the house. Amen. They help God build the tents and the temple. Amen. In the Old Testament, it is a duty of a child of God. Listen, this is a duty of a child of God to help build the temple, to help build a place of worship. The first thing Noah did when he got out of the boat, first lady, the first thing Noah did when he got out of the boat, he built an altar. In other words, a place to worship. He didn't go build a school. He didn't go build a cabin to live in. They built an altar. The first thing they built was an altar to worship the Lord. All oh, y'all don't hear me. And to give sacrifice and to bring the offering and the tithe. All oh, y'all don't hear me. God is into the tithe and offering. Tithing is biblical. Amen. Amen. Tithe and offering is biblical. Star is biblical. Sister Lisa is biblical. Mother Greer. I've never been so best in my life since I started tithing. Just been blessed way before I became a pastor, way before I became a preacher. I was tithing, me and my wife tithing, tithing. My wife tithing from a little girl. I used to stay blessed. You stay blessed. Somebody said you stay blessed that way. Amen, amen, amen. You stay blessed that way. Amen. Father, thank you for the Vision 7 now creating better jobs. We thank you for $25 an hour uh, increase. We thank for those who are getting increased to $30 an hour. We thank for those who are getting increased to $32 an hour. We thank for those who are getting increased to $35 an hour, $35.50. Somebody's getting $35.50. We thank for 40 
$42 an hour job. Thank you for $42 an hour. We thank you, Lord, right now, $45 an hour. In the name of it, $50 an hour. In the name, we speak the increase over the people of God. By faith, we thank you. Somebody just need a new job, right? Somebody need a better job with full benefits. We speak full benefits, full medical. Don't have to pay any medical. We speak it in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody want to work from home. We speak that you work from home. God going to give you a job working from home. I speak it right now in the name, on that computer. Just going to type, amen. Somebody say, I just want a job from home. Everybody else, I want to be able to watch my kids. And Amen. I speak that job from home right now. Amen. And working on the laptop, working on the computer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak the blessing of working from home. The blessing of working from home. Somebody better get ready. Ready to work from home. Get ready to work from home. I hear the Lord saying, tell them that somebody needs to get ready for work from home. You're getting ready to work from home. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we declare, amen. Vision 7 is bringing the blessing. The vision 7. Come on, sow your seed. Sow your seed into Cash App right now. Sow your seed into Zell right now. $7. Some of y'all sold it for the month. Great job. Great job. The Mother Greer's and uh, uh, the Sister Enas and Mother Shirley's and Dr. Wanda's sold for the month, amen. Uh, Dr. Wanda sold for the year, amen. Uh, listen, listen, amen. Uh, 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 you can do that. You can do that, amen. And just simply come on and agree with the prayers, amen. When you sow your seed uh, all in one month, you just simply come on at 7, 6.30, excuse me, 6.30 Thursday now, 6.30 Thursday is our time for visit 7, 6.30 Thursdays. Amen. Just come on and just be blessed. Just come on and be blessed and agree with the prayers and pray and believe God for the miracles and God's going to work it out. He's going to send financial angels to open up doors of increase, financial angels to open up new property. Somebody's getting ready to purchase property in the next six months. Somebody's getting ready to purchase property in the next year. Somebody's getting ready to purchase property in the next year and a half in the name of Jesus, at the latest, a year and a half, in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody need to praise him right now. Evangelist Linda Wheeler-Smith, amen. I just want a job from home. All right, we speak it right now. I need somebody to touch it, agree with me. And, and Sister Evangelist Linda Wheeler, amen. Uh, we know that uh, Joseph was a very good friend of yours. I don't know to what extent that you guys' friendships what, but we know that uh, you you love them. I see that obviously, Amen. And he came to know our ministry because of you. So, Sister Linda, we give our condolences to you and Joseph's family, Amen. And um, we got to send some help. We want to send something, Amen, to be a blessing. Uh, try to be a blessing to him and his family, Amen. And Did so you, we have another prayer request. From uh, First Lady Patty Trim, Lupe Alfaro Silva. Uh huh. Rushed to the hospital for chest pains. Asking for prayer. Amen. Well, let's pray right now. First Lady, thank you, First Lady, for your tithe and your offering. Amen. Amen. God is a blessing. Amen. Right here, First Lady, doing it live and in person. Amen. Listen. What we got to do is pray, First Lady Patty Trim. Amen. San Antonio. Let's everyone stick our faith towards. Uh, San Antonio, amen, Texas. What's her name again? Lupe? Lupe Alfaro Silva. Lupe Silva, in the name of Jesus, we speak and we cancel chest pains right now. We cancel chest pains right now and we declare and decree the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. We speak healing, amen, over her life and we cancel the assignment of Satan right now in Jesus' name, right now. We speak healing. Right now, we speak the blessing of God. Amen. Amen. The blessing of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. Amen. Now, listen. We're going to cut off in here in the next few moments. Amen. Yes, Sister Linda, we know you. You're God bless you coming on and knowing the loss. Amen. Of Brother Joseph. Amen. And I saw, we saw the pictures and and uh, the history that you have with him. And I, like I said, I don't know to what extent your history is with him, but we know that you loved him. We see that very uh, uh, very clearly. And I know Evangelist Linda Wheeler-Smith that his love for you caused him to like our ministry. And he told me, he said, you my pastor. He said, would you mind being my pastor? I said, no, I don't mind. Amen. And so I know he respected you Evangelist Linda Wheeler Smith to the utmost because he followed you all the way over here, amen, to Inglewood to for me to be his pastor. So 
uh, at least that's that's what he told me. And so we're praying and uh, we're believing God to take away the sorrow and the pain that you and the uh, feeling missing him. Amen. Right now. So we, we but, but but the blessing is still here. Sow your seeds, ladies and gentlemen. Sow your seeds right now. We got a couple of more minutes left. It's 7 p.m. I got to cut it off. Amen. Listen. Sow your seeds. Now we're going over the Bible study. There's a seed for the Bible study. So we're going to sow our seeds accordingly. Amen. So uh, we, we're doing two and one on Thursdays. 637, we do our um, Vision 7 giving telethon. And then from 7 uh, p.m. to 745, we go right into our Bible study. Amen. And so uh, we want to lift her up, First Lady Patty. We lifted her up already and that God heal her and take away those chest pains. And I know he can do it because he did it for me 15 years ago. Amen. So we know the Lord can do everything except fail. Amen. Amen. So we're getting ready to go. Tonight's topic is how to, how to get love, how to get love in our relationships. So we're going to make, make our relationships better. Amen. And, 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 and so by doing that, we need to learn a few things and be reminded of a few things. And much of it, well, some half is half and half. Some stuff we need to learn for the first time. Some stuff we just need to be reminded of that it must be uh, implemented, you know, daily, 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 daily. And, uh, you know, with life bringing so many um, problems and issues, sometimes it's a challenge. And y'all excuse me. I reach for the word of God. And life brings so many challenges to us. Amen. And and and, and it's 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 a tough thing. But you know, I want to talk from First Corinthians, I believe it's deal with uh, chapter seven. Uh, Corinthians uh, is a very, very, very powerful book. Amen. And uh, I believe that we will learn a lot just from the principle of love. Uh, the principle of love, amen, will speak to us profoundly in our dealings with each other and especially in relationships. And like I say, whether it's girlfriend or boyfriend, fiance, you know, if you uh, engage to somebody or the ultimate marriage. And uh, I found that you can't go wrong with the word of God, you know, in your life, you know, and when you, when you, when you have the word of God, amen, in your life, amen, it's hard for the enemy to trip you up, you know, because uh, one thing we do understand is that the word of God is essential. Amen. Uh, and if you're going to succeed in any endeavor, the word of God has the answers for it and good wisdom to abound in the thing that you're going to accomplish. What you mean by abounding? In other words, to succeed. So if you're going to abound in the thing, you need the word of God on it because the word of God is what will cause long lasting prosperity and success. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't like short-term success. I don't want to be up today and down tomorrow. Who am I talking to out there? Amen. Amen. So let's deal with what makes, uh, what gives you a chance. I, because even saved folk have problems in the relationships or marriages. Amen. And so just being saved don't uh, automatically qualify you for a good loving relationship. And, and, and I think a lot of people misinterpret that, you know, if I get a saved woman, I get a saved man, automatically we're going to be good. No, everybody has to work. Relationship is, is work. It's work because there is imperfection in both of the individuals. And sometimes one person don't think they got imperfections. Sometimes both of them know they got imperfections and they still got trouble with trying to help each other get through the imperfections. And, uh, 
you know, love is in the is in the scriptures. Uh, you 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 have uh, no further to look than the book of Songs Songs of Solomon, Amen. To find uh, love, look in Esther, you you see uh, love, Amen. And and it, it just throughout the scriptures, you will find the apostles. Some of them were married. Peter was married. Amen. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, you find love in the uh, the scriptures, uh, without a doubt. Uh, this, for instance, Songs of Solomon, chapter three. Just in case somebody think that God is not in love, Amen. He's uh, deeply into love, deeply into uh, passionate, Amen. Uh, relationships. Uh, uh, and, 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 and hey, man does not duplicate if there's not any passion or love. Come on, somebody. We're not, we're not producing children. We're not replenishing the earth. Amen. Uh, so the chapter, Songs of Solomon, chapter number three says, By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the Broadways. I will seek him whom my soul loved. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchman that goeth about the city find me. Amen. To whom I said, I saw ye. In other words, there is a longing for companionship. Somebody going to help me here. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. Sister Jones, it's not good. Mother Shirley, Sister Delaney, it's not good. First Lady, the Bible says it's not good. So how do we think we're going to get around this fact? It's a built-in, innate urge and uh, 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 attribute of man and woman to want to have companionship. Let's just get that out, the, out in the open right now. And just because I'm saved, that don't mean you don't want a boyfriend or girlfriend if you're not married. You know, they, they, it doesn't mean you don't want somebody to go out with. And it don't mean you're not saved because you got a boyfriend, you got a girlfriend. The devil is a lie. How do you get to know somebody and become engaged and then eventually get married if you're not going out, amen, and, and uh, 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 having communication with each other? You got to learn about each other. So we go out, go out, go out on short dates. And ladies, when you just meet the man, be careful. Be careful. Go out on short dates during the day. Tell him it's a lunch. You can, let's go out to lunch on a Saturday early. Amen. And tell your girlfriend who you going with, where y'all supposed to meet. Amen. And if he's that sketchy, you might not need to go out with him. You know, if you got to tell the police and call the sheriffs before you go out, you might not. You might, you might, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You might not want to, amen. Uh, but listen, be careful out there in dating church folk, amen. Uh, and somebody say, well, we shouldn't, can we date somebody who's not necessarily saved? Well, you know what? The conversation should be, and I, I, I'm, me, myself, uh, when I was going uh, to, meet first lady and we were I, I I was like really done I, I just didn't want a relationship at the time but when I saw first lady I, I, I said no I do want a relationship you know I do want to uh, uh, get married and, and, and all of that but you know we met she said let's meet at the mall and I thought that was cool you know because I understood that uh Excuse me, that you know, she's a young lady trying to protect herself. She don't know me. Uh, and uh, yeah, she met me at a restaurant near her church and not too far uh, from her home, but that don't mean anything. Amen. And so, ladies, my advice is to make sure somebody know where you're at. Your first dates, first couple of dates, uh, should be during the daytime, and your friend or family member should know where you are, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your uncles, whoever you have confidence in to let them know every step and text every step of the way. Yeah, text. And if you got a problem with that, then 
there's something wrong with him. You yeah, we at the restaurant and we get ready to leave. Uh, go to the bathroom, tell them you gotta go to the little girl's room, go to the little girl's room, do your texting. If you and, and like I say, he shouldn't feel uncomfortable with letting and if he does, that's a red flag. Or well, why who are you who are you on the phone with? Well, man, I'm just meeting you. Don't worry about it. You don't know if that's a business phone call, text or not. You know, so uh watch out for guys who are just so possessive right off. That's a red flag. Want to be out? Want to know who you texting? And uh, uh, don't worry about it. It's the first date. You better be glad you got this date. Amen. Somebody. And so, just word to the wise. Somebody say word to the wise. We're talking about how we're talking about how to make your relationship better. How to make love better. How to make love better. How to make your relationship better. Amen. And I, I believe that uh, when we start dealing with relationships, Amen. We see the scriptures not against relationships. Amen. The scripture, amen, uh, tells us throughout from Genesis to Revelation that God wants us to, amen, uh, be uh, with a companion. And it's not good for man to be alone. Amen. And so, uh, but don't stress, don't uh, uh, be fidgety about you know, getting someone, be patient, amen, don't be in a rush, make yourself available, and I will say this, for those who are looking, make yourself available in uh, in areas where you feel your type of guy would be, right, so make yourself available, go to those places where you think the type of guy you want to meet would be, amen, do your research, do your homework, talk to your friends, ladies, uh, talk to your friends that, you know, have a good husband, got a good mate, or found a good boyfriend, and you haven't heard nothing but good things. If you've seen good things out of that boyfriend, ask her, well, girl, where you meet him at? And I know y'all kind of do that anyway, but just, you know, uh, and, and, and frequent those areas. You know, you got to make your, your – you, you, you can't get caught unless, unless the catcher see you. I just said something right there. You can't get caught unless the catcher see you, right? So you gotta make your you, you gotta make yourself available to the type of men that you would like to meet, amen. And so if you keep uh, getting crappy men, then maybe you gotta be careful of the places you're going to. Maybe it's crappy places, right? So then uh, brothers that are looking for a, a wife, the same principle. Where what type of woman are you looking for? And then do your homework, find out what that woman might be frequently and 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 find yourself there. You know, end up in that place. Uh, I was fortunate. I was when I met my wife, Wendy, I was just like uh really tired, and God knew I was tired. And I told I told Lord, I'm just gonna go to church and just be in be in him. Be with the Lord, Amen. And uh, the story's been told, but it's worth telling again, especially since we're talking about relationships. Uh, I came to the end of myself, and I'm talking to the men and women tonight. In order to, you know, we're gonna get into what makes for good relationship and what makes love better, and and all of that. But you know. In order to, 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 I feel in my experience, to, to get what, what you want God to give you in the form of a mate, you got to get out of yourself. And when you get out of yourself, that means you're just like, okay, Lord, what is the agenda you have for me? And somebody, I hear y'all out there, I've been in church for years, apostle, and I still ain't found a woman, still ain't found a man. Well, let me say this. Maybe there could be several reasons why you haven't found the right one. Maybe your 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 goals are lofty. Maybe you 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 God maybe sent a boat your way and you just said no that boat is not the boat I want. But maybe it's a boat that God said it's a fixer upper. Amen. And so well, I don't want a fixer upper. Well, you know I we can't go against the will of God. And if it's not a fixed subject, then God, you on God's time. 
then maybe it's just not, it wasn't the right time for you to get a husband or a wife. Amen. But I want to tell you, blessings are delayed, never denied, never denied. They're delayed, delayed, but never denied, denied. And so I am under the assumption, and I believe it's proper assumption that in the grand scheme, in the timing of God, God will send you somebody if you put yourself in position. Amen. Sometimes as singles and individuals, God is waiting for you to clean up some stuff in your life. God is not going to give you one of his best and you still have a, 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 a attitude problem or you, 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 you don't. Um, and I'm, now, single people, don't, don't shout me down while I'm teaching. I want to say this to the singles. Don't shout me down while I'm teaching. I know there were some things I need to clean up about my life before I got Sister Fletcher, Wendy Davis. God wouldn't let me meet her till I got my stuff together to a certain extent. And I still was trying to get it together after I met her. But there were some things in my life that I had to be done with. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And, and you need to ask God, Lord, is there anything I'm doing that's holding me back from uh, finding or getting chosen? If you're a woman, you got to be chosen. Amen. Because the man who find a wife, a good thing, right? And so, uh, uh, and if you're a man, if you look still looking for a wife, and, and or the right one, maybe you got a divorce. Amen. What is it that you need to do in your life to make things right with you as an individual? Because it's, it's, it's time for us to start coming to relationships whole and not broken all the time. What do you mean? Credit broken. Somebody said been there. Yeah, been there. My credit was not good when I met my wife. No, was not good. Amen. Uh, what else I could say? You don't have a proper respect for women. I'm talking to the brothers right now. Broken, uh, you know, you might be mad at your mama. You might be mad at your last two girlfriends, whatever it may be. You got to get some stuff. God ain't going to give you one of his jewels and you all caught up. You're going to, you're going to abuse her. You're going to misuse, mistreat her. You, you're not ready. You, you, you can't provide a man, nothing uh, in the place of, uh, do you have a job? Do you, are, are you consistent? Uh, uh, are you a giver? Are you stingy? You want her to pay all the bills? If that's your mindset, well, she need to pay the bills and I'll do, you know, some certain things. Amen. God ain't going to give his best to people who not, don't have the right thinking. And ladies, do you keep a good home? Are you clean? Are you a clean person? Is your body clean? You got good hygiene. Do you care about your body, your, your, your look uh, 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 when you step out the house for any reason, or you only get dressed up when you're going to a special event. See, all these things matter. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Sister Fletcher, Sister Wendy Davis, when she stepped out the house, I don't care what it was. She stepped out the house, she looked good. I don't care if it was casual clothes. I don't care if it was uh, wherever she was going. She looked good in it. Why are you mentioning your wife? I'm just telling you the truth. That's what, I, that's what I have to go on. And I'm like most men in that area. I said in that area. Now you want your girl to look good, whether she's going to the store, going to Target, or going to the park, amen, and, uh, you know, going to a, a church event, that's casual, still look your best. Some of y'all, we catch y'all outside, and you be like, is that one of the saints for real? You need for Sunday to be every, every day need to be Sunday for you. Now, I'm just telling the truth. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad. This is all in love because I don't know about you. The truth sets me free and not a lie. Lie keeps you in bondage and soothes you. Soothes your little ego for a while. 
But you, 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 look, we don't need no egos. Egos ain't going to get you the blessing. Amen. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Amen. All right. So that's for the singles. Singles, prepare yourself. Make sure you're ready financially as best you can. Nobody's going to be perfect. And maybe you meet somebody who having uh, challenges with, with credit or challenges with getting finding the right job. Maybe you meet somebody with challenges. Maybe they uh, maybe they need you know dental work. Who knows what the challenge is? Amen. But if the person heart is good and they have a heart, a giving and loving heart, they love the Lord. Amen. You can work with them. You can make somebody shine. Am I right, First Lady? Right. You can make somebody shine. There's some time. I mean, I'm a. I, I'm going to say this. God gave me the gift to want to dress, look good. From the time I was a little boy, I've always wanted to look good in my clothes, whether it was play clothes or whatever. So much so, I, when I was a little boy, I put Vaseline on my shoes to make them shine because I didn't know nothing about polishing shoes. My daddy got mad at me. I tell that story all the time. And whooped me because I put Vaseline on my, new, on my shoes because they weren't shining like I wanted them to. I was about seven years old then. But listen, First lady, there were times I, I think I got it all pat. She said, wait a minute, hold up, baby. No, switch this around. And I put, and she'll have me switch something around. That thing be making me look like a million dollars. I come back from the meeting, and I didn't got the yeses I need. I didn't got stuff signed. I didn't got stuff done because uh, the wife gave me good advice. Come on, somebody. And vice versa. Be willing to listen to your husband, your mate. Amen. Uh, but dress is important. Hygiene is important. And I'm talking about consistency every day. Every day, man, keep your hygiene up. Every day, keep your hair done. If it's in braids, ladies, braid it up. If you're going to wear a wig, make sure the wig is done right. Don't have it all over your head like this, and you're looking like you just... Walked off the the, uh, the 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 homeless bus. You know, uh, don't let these wigs make y'all you know get get lazy. Make sure that wig is is combed and brushed. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I'm talking to somebody who want to be chosen. I'm talking to somebody. Men, make sure your hygiene is good. And 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 listen to your family members. Man, you think you go and you no man go back and uh get some cologne on or do come on somebody you 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 brothers make sure your hygiene is right make sure it's right, right. clean smelling good all the area all the private parts especially that's where the funk really builds up now be real tonight when the funk hit the fan, don't let it hit the fan. Don't get in the car and the and we gotta roll the windows down. Cause not not because you let off gas. We gotta roll the windows down because this is stuff that's living on you. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I'm talking to somebody tonight. And you wonder why they don't want a second date? Cause you was funky. I'm just talking right now. I'm just funk, funk, funk. That you should not be uh, uh, funking from California. You should not be funking from Chicago, wherever you live. There's a song called Funkin' from Jamaica. Don't be funky. Talking about you going to get married. Talking about, I don't know what's wrong with him. I was dressed nice, but you stinking. I don't know what's wrong with her. I was, man, I had my, my best suit on. But man, you was, you was smelling like a hog. Amen, somebody. I'm talking here tonight. Real talk. And you know, if, now listen, if you know your breath is extra, just keep mincing it, man. Do what you got to do. You know, it don't matter what she thinks or he thinks. Keep some mints in your stuff. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Don't get mad. Don't, 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 don't get mad now. This is all wisdom. This is all. Uh, Solomon said life is vanity. It's, in other words, uh, first lady dad used to say this word to her. I remember him saying, Wendy, you vain. 
and 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 it was good because that means she was staying on her P's and Q's from her stockings to her toes being done. What do you, I'm, I, you know? Okay, Bishop, you're talking about your wife. Well, that's what I have to go on for 30 years. All right, and I've seen uh, some women that I that I dated that wasn't always up to that part. That's why it was a date and not engagement. Y'all gonna help me preach in here. Uh, uh, one of the reasons. So, uh, and, and I, you know, and and I had to be reminded even as a young man or going and playing basketball, and 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 I said, you know what, I, I got to take a change of shirt. Uh, cause, uh, 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 and pardon me, First Lady, for a moment uh, before I got married. I changed the shirt because I realized I get a little funky. I bring a towel, and before my girlfriend would come over, I would wipe myself, go in the, the gym room, in the training room, wipe myself down. And if it wasn't the training room in the gym, I wipe myself down, say, stay, tell her to stay across the way because I don't want to offend. Y'all don't hear me. I'm wiping myself down, amen, and I give my best little cleanup put a fresh, clean T-shirt on, amen, and then bring, call her to bring her over and, and talk to her or meet my, my, my teammates or whatever. Listen, there's a way to do everything. There's a way to do everything. And don't just think somebody wants to deal with, with your with your odor, with your odor. You know your, you know your, uh, you got uh, feet problems? Don't be taking your shoes off over at her house. Don't take your shoes. Keep your shoes on. Keep your shoes wrapped, bro. And 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 and, and, and keep some tapkin powder under them feet. Whatever you got to help you. Amen. Amen. And so there's just certain things, you know, certain things we need to remember. Uh, because most people don't like foul odor. I don't care who they are, not unless they 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 foul themselves. And foul begets foul sometime. Amen. But so let's talk about what makes for a better relationship. You're in the relationship now. You guys have passed the stage of the, you know, you didn't you didn't let off gas in front of each other. You didn't um done a lot of things that probably both of y'all embarrassed at this point, but you, you figure that you really like each other or you really love each other. And I'm talking to boyfriend and girlfriend and married couples right now. But more so, those who really see a future together or you're married and you're like, okay, what do we do? I think the number, number one thing, if you're in a deep relationship and you kind of been in it for maybe two or three years now or more, you'll find there's the stages that a relationship is going to go through. Of course, there's the excitement, the lovey-dovey stage, and where anything she say is just funny, sexy, and all of the above. Anything he says is funny and sexy and all of the above for the most part. And that honeymoon phase lasts, depending on the individuals, depending on how hyped they are about each other, you know, for a year to two years, maybe, you know, three and then there's a phase where, okay, I really love this person. And they are, uh, uh, and this is not everybody's relationship. This is just a generalization. Some phases could be a, a five years, seven years, 10 years of honeymoon blitz and on fire. And some could be 20 years. Who knows? It depends on the individual. But if you say average, uh, and I, watching my friends and how they interacted with women, and how they interacted with some of their wives, uh, you know, uh, you can see the 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 lifespan of of fire in a in a marriage or relationship. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Where you just you can't you don't can't stop talking to them. You're on the phone all night if you're single, amen. And you just amen. Then when you even when you get married, you're just like can't wait to get home. Can I come? Can you come see me for lunch? Can we meet for lunch? I know you're working, but can you come? Y'all don't hear me. And so that fire is last, you know, depending on who you are, where you are, and what transpires in the relationship, what transpires in the marriage. Amen. There are things that can put that fire out, but you got to be able to 
when when water is thrown on your passion and your love, amen, your fire, you know, to 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 want to cuddle and hug and touch or whatever, amen. Now I'm, now I'm talking to my married couples, but I'm still talking to singles that you, those of you who are dating, and I'm trying to keep a balance here. But you know the word of God says we shouldn't fornicate, all right? So let's get that out the way. And we know married couples, we shouldn't what? Commit adultery. All right, so we got those out the way. Now let's talk. Amen. So, but a relationship that's going to be sustained with fire and love, you got to, number one, be mindful. Be mindful. Now, type this in. I, First Lady, can you type this in, the word mindful? Type mindful. I see you, Sister Debbie, Mother Barnett. When you in a relationship, this is for both, both of you, man and woman. If it's going to, uh, if you're going to uh, keep the fire lit, or rekindle passion, you got to go back to being mindful. See, this one of the things we forget to do is be mindful of one another's uh, traits and one another's uh, uh, the things we like to do. So you got to go back and, and, and then you got to reassess your mate on a constant basis. What do she like doing? Okay, she used to like going to... Um, the skating ring uh, when y'all first got together, or she liked uh, that certain restaurant down there by the water, right? But now she don't want to go by the water. She wants to go up there in the hills to that little that little restaurant in the hills. And she's been talking about it. She's been going. She ain't gone with her friends. Or he didn't go on. But so being mindful of one another or what he like doing when he come home, or when I, when, when I go over his house, you know, he likes for me to cook a little something. And then next week he'll take me out. Be mindful of the things that he liked in you when y'all first met. Be mindful of the traits that drew him or her into you. We get lackadaisical. And I've been there. I've been there. And I've had to uh, ask my wife to forgive me for being lackadaisical in the things uh, she wanted. And the things that made her happy. So I'm not teaching. I'm not teaching from a place of perfection. I'm teaching from a place where I've been at that rubbed my wife the wrong way. And she, if she was in this seat, and maybe she needs to be right behind, right beside me, she would tell you there was things that she lacked for me. But guess what? After being mindful, here's number two. We communicated. We start saying, wait a minute. Okay, she's upset about something. He's upset about something. We better start talking because we're going to lose each other. So after being mindful of what attracted you to that person and going back sometime or revitalizing or reassessing what her needs are today, not five years ago, not two years ago, not even one year ago, especially since the COVID, everybody mind is this thing. You don't know what your mate going to be doing. You got to talk to your mate right now. You got to see what's on her mind. See what's on your boyfriend's mind. See what's on your girlfriend's mind. See where their money is. See where their goals are. Who am I talking? I'm, I'm talking about if you want to bring passion back into your relationship, if you want fire back. Now, it might not happen overnight. So, Bishop, I tried talking. I'm going to try talking to him. And you're going to come back. You come back next week and say, well, it didn't work. It's not. Everything is not a, 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 a one hit or quitter. A miracle pill. Everybody wants that miracle pill where, you know, I follow these instructions. It's going to immediately work. But you're working with a you're working with, you know, devils are hearing this teaching. I'm going to say this again. Demons are listening to the teaching. They're watching you get this information. So you're going to, you might have a man, a combative spirit there that you're going to contend with. That's why the Bible says in the book of Jude, contend for the faith, which was once delivered to the saints. I'm delivering you this faith message on love and marriage. And I'm telling you that you got to be mindful of your boyfriend, mindful of your girlfriend, mindful of your husband, mindful of your wife, of the things that they, they liked when you first met them, and then the things that they currently like. So stop taking her to places she don't want to go no more. Stop taking him or buying him stuff for his birthday that he don't no more. 
He don't want no more tired socks. He don't want no more of this or that. You, you ask him, well, how do I know? Go ask him what he want. My wife asked me, honey, what do you want for your birthday? Where do you want to go? She wants, that's a woman that want to please her husband. Thank you, honey. And so we have to uh, try to continue to move in that vein, asking. I asked my wife, well, where do you want to go on vacation? Because if she happy, I'm going to be happy. If y'all don't hear me. I know where I, I could go. I, I, it don't matter to me. But if I don't, if my wife is not happy, then it, it, what, what the heck are we doing? What are we doing, men? Now, we can't make them happy all the time. Let me say this. Brothers, you're never going to make your wife 100% happy. No, nope, it's impossible. God left that for him. He's the only one that can make a, a, a wife happy and uh, uh, vice versa. I'm telling you right now. So you got that in your mind. So be mindful, present and past things that they like. And uh, then uh, number number two, you you want to uh, you know integrate a man uh, communications, up the game in communications. Sometimes it's rough because it's a situation going on, and maybe he or she don't really want to talk about it. But you got to be persistent in the fact that come to them in love, come to them in a peaceful moment to talk about things that may be of serious nature and may be uh, maybe cause, um, you know, uh, stress upon the relationship, you know, make sure it's a peaceful time. Don't try to talk about stuff and you're already arguing on one subject. All right. So, you know, pick, pick, pick the timing. Ask God to show you when is the best time to talk to my husband about this situation. When's the best time to talk to my wife? When's the best time to talk to my boyfriend, my girlfriend about this situation that I have a real problem with? So communication is number two, stepping up your communications, stepping up your communications to the point where uh, both of you all, amen, undeniably going to, you going, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. I'm not going to be forceful, but I'm, and like I keep telling folk, uh, tone is everything. Amen. And don't always challenge your mate with, with something like you doing you did something wrong. I just got a question. Sometimes it just be need to be posed as a question. How do we enter into this type of situation? You know, don't don't always say you did this. Pose a question. Be wise. Bring the scenario up. Sometimes, yeah, you got to be direct. But just get the leading of the Holy Ghost. Get the leading of the Holy Ghost. And, and when you do that, you're going to find that you're going to be able to go into those stressful moments and talk about those situations that may upset you or it may upset him. Uh, you're going to be able to do it in a manner where you can get through it. It's never easy talking about issues that hurt each other. It's never easy. Let's just, all right, let's just get that. Uh, uh, number three, it's not easy. So, so that's a part of our life. Discussing troubled times is not easy with someone who you love, you don't want to hurt, but at the same time, we need a, a, a good godly resolve with this situation because it's hurting me. And it's never easy. I, I just don't, it's never easy. So uh, if, if you don't want, if you don't want to deal with tough topics, then, how can I say it? You're not ready for marriage. Uh, that's all I can put it. If you're not ready to deal with tough topics and 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 deal with people getting upset, your your mate getting upset, then you're not really you're not ready for marriage. Uh, marriage is a privilege, and it's a privilege that is sustained by those who know that they're not perfect, that they but they need to hear their, their husband out, their, their wife out. Here, there's no dumb question. 
right? That's your wife. That's your husband. Yeah, sometimes we're short-tempered. We're short-patient. I don't want to hear that right now. Okay, if, if he or she says that, then table that discussion for another time. It ain't going to kill you, right? Table the discussion for another, another time. Some people just got to, no, you're going to talk to me. No, don't nobody have to talk to you, not even your wife, your your husband, not unless if, if you know, there, of course, there's certain things uh, uh, need to be talked about. You know, there's some crazy stuff that goes on in the marriage where you better give me an answer right now. <laughs> right, right. So we know that there's stuff. And no, I need to know what what did you do right here? What was this? Come on, somebody. Amen. And so, but if it's something that can be tabled, let it go until you guys are both in a more peaceful state. Amen. I know um, first lady, she get mad at me if I've done something. She would say, Yo, you know what? It's just best to let me leave me alone right now. Right. And so uh, you got to know your mate. And when I say I don't, uh, hey, I don't want to talk about nothing. That means I don't want to talk about nothing right now. And she has to respect that. So we both know our breaking points when we don't want to hear about nothing. Just going to uh, uh, take a chill pill, as they say. Amen. And so, uh, so you know, a better relationship, understand, when you got to take a chill pill, you can't force your mate to want to talk to you. Right. So so that that will help you, uh, you know, get the love. Amen. Uh, that that is needed. The number four, you got to be able to create new memories, new memories, new memories. It's nothing like doing the same old thing every week. Nothing like the same old stuff, going to the same old place. Amen. And uh, I found it challenging out here because L.A. is big, but it ain't big. It's not big no more like it used to be. Certain places I can't even go. I want to go, but I, don't, I just don't feel comfortable. I'm going to just say it real nice right now. Some places I would take my wife right now that we haven't been to in a long time. Certain areas I like to go to that I don't feel comfortable with. So we're kind of stuck right now a little bit. I just don't go everywhere like we used to. I like to make adventurous situations as best I can. But right now, we're being very wise where we go, where we go out to eat, where we go out to uh, have fun. And, and do. of course, we know we all been under the COVID. So COVID has made stuff just crazy. And things are just kind of getting back to some type of normalcy uh, now. And so I know a lot of relationships have been strained, but you got to create new venues, go to new different places. And and and, and even uh, on tomorrow, I was just thinking about a place to go to, amen. And I hope, amen, that it, it will be available to do. And she don't even know. I, I got a real surprise for tomorrow. Amen. And so I, I want, we're going to do something tomorrow that we ain't done in many years, many years. And, and so, and so the thing is, is that if you want to create a spice and, and a fire back in your relationships, you, you, you got to and, and ladies, sometimes you got to help the man out. We can be so dumb. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to tell the truth. We can be so stuck in our ways and so dumb and we get tired sometime in our thinking, and we won't create. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that I've just been this creator or, or romancer. No, I've gotten stale. First lady had to knock on my on my noggin and say, hey, man, what you doing? I'm bored. Same old thing. So I'm not sitting here uh, talking from, a you know, like I've had, always had it together. Many times I've missed it, but thank God that I've woken up in time and before the, we went off the cliff. Oh, okay, I just said something right there. Amen. Amen. You got to wake up for you. You can fall asleep on the freeway. Wake up, Negro. Wake up. Excuse me. Wake up. Right? And so we fall asleep at the will of passion. We fall asleep at the will because we think, oh, she should just be happy because I got a roof over her head. He should be happy because I gave him a kiss last week. 
uh, uh, talking to the girlfriends and boyfriends. He should be happy. I took him around my family. She, she, she should be happy. I gave, I uh, bought her a dress. I, I bought her a gold necklace. No, 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 hold on, hold on, people. You got to be appreciative of everything, but don't just stop there. Keep going to higher heights. If you, if, you know, uh, it's a challenge uh, because, uh, especially as you get older, there, there's all kind of health issues that arise, all kind of things that arise. Uh, maybe you're taking care of a family member. Things happen in life. Uh, maybe you are, are dealing with a uh, layoff. Uh, all kind of stuff, especially with this COVID, all kind of things that happen to cause people, uh, uh, sex senses, I'm talking about the married couples now, uh, to kind of go, the up, they're thinking about just surviving. Folks are just thinking about, am I going to be breathing tomorrow, right? So, so, but as we get out of the COVID and, and the thing, uh, we, we, you know, let's, let's revitalize the love life. Let's revitalize uh, uh, married couples, your sex life, revitalize. And it starts with going to different places, create new venues of excitement. Maybe you never thought about going horseback riding. Go horseback riding. Maybe you never thought about, hey, man, going to the museum. Go to the museum down there, Getty's Museum. Uh, I'm talking about folks on the West Coast here in California, LA area. Wherever your area is, hey, man, pose a new venue. And maybe a sexy venue, maybe an exciting venue, but pose a new venue. Because new venues create new conversation. Man, it's like, oh, babe. And, and it gives a fresh outlook. And maybe she got something new on. And why she getting out the car? You just the lusting, husband. You just the lusting. Amen. And, and lady, uh, he got a new outfit on. Y'all going to a new place you've never been. And you just the lusting after him. I'm talking to the married folks. Amen. Now, you singles. Amen. I'm going to say this. It's okay to give a hug. Amen. Appreciation for a nice date. A good Christian hug. Uh, Paul said, greet each other with a good holy kiss. Y'all don't hear me. So, amen. Kiss on the cheek. Amen. Will, will suffice for a good uh, uh, night's dinner. And I heard somebody say, no, I'm going to give him a real kiss. Watch yourself, sister. Watch yourself, brother. Amen. <laughs> amen. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I want to tell you some of the most uh, uh, exciting times of revitalizing my love life with my wife has been when I've gone out on a Friday night, when we've gone out on a, 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 a night out, and it just uh, rekindled the fire and the juices. Amen. I'm talking to my married folk right now of love and sex and fire. And sex is good in marriage. I say sex is good in marriage. Not wrong with it. Amen. Amen. But as you grow deeper and older in the relationship, You've got to bring new fire to the situation. You can't keep the same old fire thing as go. That same wood is going to burn for 30 years. It's not. You got to bring new fire to the situation. Amen. Amen. And so when we do that, amen, a new fire could be a six. And, and ladies, men, don't be afraid if your wife or your husband start talking some new jargon. I said jargon. I'm dating myself. Some new sexy talk. Well, where did you get that from? Uh, I want to be creative. I ain't get it from nobody else. Somebody said, I ain't get it from nobody else. I'm just trying to be creative. But when did you start wearing that? Stop be all, don't be so insecure. Maybe she just uh, maybe looked online or something. She's trying to bring some excitement to the situation. Or he's trying to be, don't be so doggone uh, inspector gadget about the new love signals that your mate is sending you or giving you. Well, maybe where did you learn that from? You know, I, you know, all kind of stuff come up. And both sides are guilty of it. Both sides are guilty of, hey, amen. your mate trying to bring something new to the table, and you thinking they didn't got it from somebody else. Oh, help me now. Help me right now. Help me. Help me right now. Don't shout me down while I'm teaching good. Don't, don't, don't you dare do it. Love, love, uh, things that make for a better love life. Things that make for a better love life. That's what we're talking about tonight. Things that make for a better love life, you know. And so I, I, I'm learning and yet learning uh, that uh, you got to do whatever it takes to keep the fire burning. You got to do it because so many variables come in, especially when you get uh, uh, to up in the 40s, 40s and on 40s and up, uh, and uh, things, all kind of things begin to come into play that you got to rebuke out of your mindset. Uh, maybe old hurts 
and maybe you hurt each other, and that thing could get in the way of romance and seeing your mate as sexy. Uh, come on, somebody. I'm talking the truth now. I'm talking the truth. So we got to let things go. Amen. You can't let that thing fester in your mind. Well, he did this, so I, I ain't going to do that. And she did this. Well, I ain't going to do that. Amen. So we got to be uh, at a place where we come brand new to, to the marriage again. Get your mind cleared. Amen. Get your heart fixed. Amen. So you can come and be brand new in the situation. Um, so I, I recommend uh, nice uh, uh, kisses in the morning, hugs. And um, I, I purposely bump into my wife on the way when we go on the way to the, to, the, to the bathroom, I bump into her or I touch her in a certain areas and, and um, uh, be purposeful in the morning, amen. And, I, and whether or not anything happened or not, I wanted to know I still think she's fine and sexy and all the above. And so brothers, if you're listening, if you're watching, that should be occurring every day, amen. And ladies, give the same back to your husband, compliment him as he compliments you, amen. And so we'll find ourselves, amen, rekindling, amen, for a better love life, amen, and recovering from past pains and hurts, amen. And so uh, the way to recover is create new memories. And sometimes we get so stuck and we're so mad, we don't want to do nothing new. I don't want to go nowhere with him. I don't want to go nowhere with her, but that's killing your love life. That's going to kill your passion. Amen. And uh, quite frankly, I get so excited to go out with my wife because it reminds me of the days when we first met. And, and so it's a blessing. Amen. You look back at the days that you first start dating and all that stuff. And you see where you are today. Amen. And see where you could have been dead in jail, in prison, uh, sick and, and uh, crippled or and, and those anybody who may be uh, in a wheelchair. I mean, all kinds of stuff could happen. And so you got to thank God for where you're not. Amen. And when I think about the goodness of the Lord, amen, how he kept me and my wife, amen, I, I'm thankful to the Lord. Uh, we're relatively good shape and amen, we're still able to uh, hold and touch each other, kiss on each other, amen, and do those things. So listen, uh, take the time to uh, uh, appreciate what God is giving you, amen, and don't take for granted your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You got a man that is inquiring about your life. That's a man A man that when you get sick, he's seeing about you. He going to the store, get you uh, uh, some big sab or some, some medicine. That's the person that cares about you, ladies. He's He don't live with you. He calling you up. He's trying to figure out what can he do to help you. Oh, I'm, I'm all right. My mama got me. My, my brother got me. You know, don't get mad at him. He trying to help. And ladies, vice versa. Brothers, vice versa. You know, you, so brothers, be attentive to her. And, and she'll know you love her when she get, if, if God forbid, she gets sick or she she uh, get low on her money and you might cash out her $50 or something and say, uh, have a good day. And she might say, what is this for? This thing about the, the maybe, you know, come on somebody. And so there's different things you could do, amen, to cheer up your mate cheer up your boyfriend or girlfriend and you know you don't treat your boyfriend and girlfriend like a wife or a husband because now now you, you you're doing too much amen but uh there are things you can do amen and i think uh you know you play it by ear as much as he's doing for you try to meet him you know somewhere around there hey, if she's doing something for you try to meet her definitely want to meet so if i was a man i want to surpass what my girl is doing for me so my wife I like to surpass what she do for me. I don't ever want her given to be equal to mine. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Because I love her and I want her to know that uh, there's there's not a price uh, too high for her. If I got it, I want to do it. Uh, I just said something right there. Just said something right there. So uh, making... Uh, Relationship better, uh, it requires uh, a self uh, to be unselfish and to think not on your own terms and what you want and what you're going through. A lot of people get stuck on what they're going through. Your mate going through some stuff too. 
And so you got to be mindful of, of what your mate may be going through and what he or she may be feeling. Can't be all about you just because you're in a tough situation. Amen. Amen. That they, they, it, it can't be all about when you in trouble, everything got to stop. Life goes on. And yes, he should attend to you. She should attend to your situation. You know, uh, I was very thankful to my wife. Uh, sometimes I, if I catch a cold or something, amen, or I'm not feeling good, she should come in and what you need. Well, uh, I need this. She'll do it. And I don't want to be too pressing on her. Sometimes I am, but sometimes I realize, man, she's just as tired as I am. So I'll, I just, I'll go down, I'll go downstairs and get stuff sometime because I, I know she worked to the bone already. Amen. So it's being thoughtful. I'm going to say just being thoughtful about each other in times of crisis and knowing how much work your mate is putting out. Realize how much that man, if that man is going to work and bringing home a check or, or, or making sure you good or making sure your children are good and he they, he's not, he's a stepdad and he's taking care. I mean, come on now. If that lady is taking care of your kids and you going to work and you ain't never heard your kids say, daddy, she beat me for nothing. Man, you should be thankful that that woman is in your house taking care of your kids and your kids look better, your daughter hair is done better, your son hair is kept up, they cleaner than what you were doing. Come on, somebody. Thank God, I want to say this, thank God for the good stepdads and the good stepmoms out there. I want to say this right now, because they don't get enough pub. And usually, uh, they get drug in the mud sometimes. Thank God for somebody going to take care of your kids, and they didn't birth them. They're not their seed. Thank God. Blended families are tough because, uh, you know, when you're not going to beat my child, you're not going to whoop my kids. You just talk to them. Okay. The, 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 you know, uh, 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 but your ki keep your kids in line. Keep your grown kids out of that man's face before he break that finger off. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Keep your underage child out of that man's face. And he's trying to affect you and your kids. And you're going to let your kids run you out of a good man. It ain't their daddy. He's not their daddy, but he's there as a figure of authority and love. And you know that man is not trying to get at your daughter, and God forbid, he's trying to get at your son. You need to be thankful. He bringing them a birthday gifts. They can't say thank you. He taking them to football games and basketball games and bar mitzvahs and all this, and they can't say thank you. You got to tell them thank you, and you don't teach your kids to say thank you. That's out of line. You're going to make that man say, I'll go somewhere else and be appreciated. Ladies, I'm trying to tell, ladies, don't get tricked. Don't think that man won't leave you for somebody who will appreciate him. You can't rub his back, but he can rub your back. I just said something right there. Oh, I don't do backs. I don't do back rubs. I don't rub feet. Who are you? Well, he don't rub my feet, but he paying for your for you to go to the massage place and get massage therapy and the and the what they call it, the orthopedic man. Pedicure. The pedicure, the manicure, masseuse. the masseuse. But you got now. I can't rub his back. Oh, he's gonna get somebody else for that. Oh, he will. He will get somebody to rub his back. And and brother, I ain't paying for her nails. I ain't paying for her. She'll get somebody to pay her nails and get her. Oh, there's somebody out there. There's always somebody out there. I say it's always somebody out there. And God forbid, I'm talking to married couples right now. Don't take your wife for granted. Don't take your husband for granted. Make that man some soup like you did when you when y'all was dating. Uh, cook that man a, a meal sometime like you did when y'all was dating. Now, if she's sick, and, and, and okay, okay, okay. Let me let me. I feel my Holy Ghost help now. So, marriage 
They say marriage is 50-50. Sometimes it's not going to be 50-50. Sometimes marriage is 80-20. Sometimes marriage is 70-30. Uh, Why? Why are the numbers so obscure the other way? Because maybe your mate is sick. She can't give you nothing but 20%. And that 20% is her breathing. She can't. She's sick, man. She can't. You expect a oh, why, why you ain't washing this? She's sick. She bedridden, fool. So marriage becomes 80-20, but we in it for the long haul. Marriage is not marriage is for the long haul. But people ain't gonna be in it for the long haul if you don't long haul with them. It ain't, it, one person ain't gonna keep carrying the train. It takes two to carry the train all the way. You need the caboose and the engine. Who am I talking to? No, I'm telling the truth. You 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 think you you think your yo 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 uh pearly teeth is gonna uh keep that man. No, it's much more than the pearly teeth. Well, I cook him dinner once every two months. Oh, you okay, all right, all right. Keep up with that. Keep up with that. Keep me keep that same energy. <laughs> keep that same energy. You talking about you want to get married, he's gonna say. Uh-uh, we ain't getting married to her. I'll get a meal at once, a cooked meal once every two months. No, I'm not going to Sizzler every day. I'm not going to Mastro's every weekend. Okay. Well, that's the type of man I want. Okay, we'll keep waiting on him. And you might find that man. You might find that woman. Well, I want a woman. She got to wash dishes or go to work 12 hours a day and come home and clean up the whole house. Man, you better help her wash them dishes. You sitting up at home, you got off early, and you're going to wait till she get home, know she working. You can wash those dishes. You can put them in a the dishwasher. It ain't going to hurt you to do that every now and then. It won't hurt you to cook dinner if she's getting off late. I'm just talking here. I'm talking about making love, making your marriage better, making your relationship. When you, so, so it ain't going to always be 50-50 marriage. Okay, she's not sick, but maybe she's stressed out. Maybe the Maybe the job is stressing him out. Maybe his boss is getting so that it just taking him, it's taking everything for him just to go to work and come home. He don't need to hear about you. Why hear about why he didn't put his clothes up in the hamper and he working 12 hour shifts and his boss is giving him all kinds of grief. That's right. Then on top of that, he's dealing with prejudiced spirits. They don't like him because of his color of his skin. And you want to come home? He want you think he want to hear all this complaining? And he bringing the check home? He keeping the mortgage paid, keeping the roof over your head, the rent, or at least he's giving you half of his check. He's doing this. Come on! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've been married for thirty years and counting. Thirty-one. Thirty-one years and counting. Okay. It's going to take two to get it done. One person can't keep coming to the well and getting water. At some point, the other person got, got to get that other person rest and go to the well and get the water. Okay, I just said something right there. Well, what is the scripture for this, Bishop? What well, The re Corinthians about love. Love is not puffed up. Love does not serve itself. Love is kind. Love is gentle. I'm talking about love. If you're getting married, it's got to be based on love, the love of God, not the love your grandmama taught you, not the, if it wasn't in the scriptures, not the love your grandfather taught you or your mama, your daddy. You, you know, you got to base this thing off of the scriptures. Love is long-suffering. It's patient. Now, in those scriptures, in those scriptures, Let's read Corinthians. Read Corinthians on love and marriage and all that. First Corinthians. Let's go to First Corinthians. Right now, I'm just going to rattle off principles that you, that's in the scripture. Uh, Bible talks about love your husband as Christ. Uh, a wife, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He gave his life for it. Gave him, so a man should be prepared to literally give his life for his wife, his family. Amen, if need be. 
So I'm a work. I should be a worker. I should be bringing money in legally, one way or the other. Amen, somebody? Tended to her knees. Not just uh, 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 us men, we get caught up on the on the physical, physical and not emotional because we're not emotional. But women need emotional support. They, you, they need you to go sit down with them and don't say a word. Let her talk. Let her tell you all about her day. And look her in the eyes. I had trouble doing that. I'd be veering off watching the Laker game. I'd be veering off because that just that was a, a fault of mine. No excuse. I can't put it on the devil. That was a fault of mine. My wife would be talking to me, and I'm looking at the Laker game. She'd be talking to me, and I'm looking at the Raider game. And I honestly, I'm listening to her, but I'm, I got one eye on the game and one eye on her. And that's not right. She's talking to you. Give her your full divided attention. After she get through talking, she's going to let you go. She's going to let you go and do what you need to do, but give her her time. And vice versa. I don't want to hear it. I heard this. He going to talk about his friends. I'm tired of him and his old crazy friends. Don't be that way. You might not like his friends, but he like his friends. <laughs> it matters to me. <laughs> so <laughs> famous words of a man that I, I truly come to love. It matters to me. So if you love him, the things that matter to him should matter to you. And if you love her, the things that matter to her should matter to you. So a healthy, fiery relationship, when you give that woman eye contact, brothers, this is one of the complaints, and I've been there in the complaint. I've been in the doghouse for this. Uh, uh, you you got to give eye contact and then uh, even today, we got all these social media. Get out of the phone. Stop trying to text and all do all that. And both of y'all need to just put your phones down. I'm going to say this because both of y'all are guilty of that. Amen. Uh, get out the phone and just put the phone down at the restaurant. Put the phones up. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Put the phones up at the restaurant. Put them up. And just talk and enjoy one another. Folks are cutting out of here so fast. People are passing away. Young and old, they're getting out of here. YouTube, they're getting out of here. My YouTube viewers, God bless y'all. Amen. And y'all can comment. Y'all can comment here on YouTube. You can go to YouTube. And I would need y'all to go to Bishop Fletch on YouTube. Go subscribe and like. Press, press the like button on YouTube. Subscribe and like. I'm almost done. For tonight. First lady, you just I just looked on the board. You said tone is everything. I like that. I need to reiterate that. The way you talk to your mate, you trying to get through a point, but you screaming and cussing and yelling. That's not gonna make for hot sex. That's gonna make a nigga wanna run out of the house. Um, white folks, forgive me. Black folks, forgive me for saying nigga. But that's going to make a person want to run out the house. You yelling and screaming and, and, and you cussing her out, thinking she want to listen to that. She just going to get in her car and go. You not, She's not going to keep sitting up there and you keep uh, doing, uh, what's the dude's name? You keep doing, uh, 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 what's his name? Who's the singer? Husband kept beating her up. Who? You keep doing an eye turn on her and think she just going to sit there. Thank you, First Lady. She's not going to keep sitting there and listening to you, Ike. No. It's because she don't want to split your dome open, she just leaves. <laughs> oh, I just said something right there. Oh, I just God. said, oh, you're talking to save people. Oh, hey, don't underestimate the heart of a lioness. Lioness and lions. Something. And I prayed nothing, no violence. I've never hit my wife in 31 years. I've never hit a woman. 32 years I've been with 32 you. years you've been with me. I've never touched my wife. I never raised my hand to hit her. Never, never, never. I don't believe in hitting a woman. I think you're a chump if you, you. I got a worse word for you. But I'm going to be nice because I'm on YouTube and I'm on Facebook. And I don't want them to cancel me and put me what they call Facebook. Um, 
timeout and YouTube timeout. But if you, you, I, I got, if I wasn't saved, I, I tell you what you are by hitting a woman. I don't care what reason. Just if you got to run out the house, run out the house before you hit a woman. Before you push her or hit her, anything like that. Just run. Yeah, call me a chump, but I'll never be called a woman beater or a wife beater. I think you, 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 the lowest, the lowest man is a man that will hit a woman. I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Uh, well, I won't. That, that that's not the lowest first lady. To me, the lowest man is a man that is a pedophile that will abuse oh, a child. Even a man. Right. So the lowest man. To, here's my. Let me just get it on. And, and ladies, be careful with your kids. Yep. Be careful with your kids. You just meet the man. Don't bring him around your kids. You make sure you find out about this man and Ooh, and, and, and type on. his name up and make sure he's not on the pedophile list. But the lowest man to me is a man that will abuse a child and or rape a woman. That's the lowest man You're to not me. Not even a man. Now I'm not counting murder. I'm not counting a man. Uh, that of course a man that will kill somebody, kill a woman, kill a person for no reason. They ain't done nothing to you. You the lowest. But then the second lowest is a pedophile. If the second lowest somebody abuse a woman, and you gonna force yourself on a woman just because she went out on. Went out with you, and she bought you bought her estate, so she got to have sex with you. You a demon from the pit of hell, because right. you bought her an ice cream sandwich. She's supposed to give you all kind of kisses. She ain't got to give you nothing. Oh, now, ladies, don't ask for Mastros if you can't get a man a thank you and a hug. You you need to go to Burger King <laughs> if you can't get a man a hug. A man go expect a little affection. And I'm talking whether you're married or not. I mean, just give him a little hug and say, hey, I appreciate that dinner. Okay, I just said something right there. Ladies, don't just think I'm just going to let y'all just have freebies up in here now. I'm going to give both sides. That man spent $200 on you and you can't give him a smile and a thank you and a hug. And a Pepsi, Star says. A card. A card. <laughs> Money, money don't come on. As my grandpa used to say, it don't grow on trees. Now it do, but it don't. You know, you gotta make it. Money come from paper. Paper come from trees. So, <laughs> if anybody agree with Mother Barnett, say Amen. My God, Amen. Mother Barnett, uh, Rosie Greer, create new memories. All right. Let's see what the responses are right now. Let's read some of the responses right now. We have Sister Yolanda said, enjoy, sis. I don't know what that is. Challenge yeah, yourself to be better. Saying, uh, don't let anybody get on your set. Oh, okay. New places, happiness. Uh, First Lady said, have to be comfortable for us both. Yes, I agree. Uh, Minister Shatan is watching. Okay. Uh, Brother Wilbur Morris said, we miss it sometime, but willing to adjust. I like that. Yeah. Willing to adjust. Brother Morris said, willing to adjust. That's big. That's big. You got to be willing to adjust your 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 your, your uh, new goals with your mate. Right. I like that, Brother Morris. Uh, Mother Barnett said, everything is in the Bible. Read it. <laughs> Jesus. God told Moses, teach the people. Consecrate them. They came out of Egypt in a bad condition. Hey, go back to the Bible. When all else fails, go back to the Bible. Thank you, Mama Barnett. Uh, Sister Ellen Morris says, date night is good. I agree with you 1,000%. Date night is good. Is it good, First Lady? Oh, yeah. You looking good over there. You looking like two lunches and a snack. My wife over there looking good. Jesus. My mother, my, my baby over there looking good. First lady said, Inspector Gadget. All right. Get, oh, okay. That reminds me. Come with some gadgets. You got to come with some trick plays. Y'all don't hear me. Oh, Amen. In, in, in the football, they win games sometimes with the trick plays. In other words, a play that, that, that the enemy, that the opposing team don't think that's going to be ran. So sometimes you got to do something different for your husband, for your mate, to get them excited. Oh, I just said something right there. Uh, uh, singles, close your ears on that one. Amen. But but uh, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> First lady said, don't be a weirdo. Follow your husband's lead. Yeah. Amen. Wanda Lee said, I hear you, Apostle Fletcher. She put two ears up, First Lady. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. 
This is so beautiful. Uh, Bishop Johnny Moore. Okay, let me see. Uh, Apostle Richard and Younger, thank you to the Lord. Amen. I got I got my uh, my folks that just they stand with the word. Amen. Uh, Mother Shirley Neal says, "Ladies, do not get tricked." Right. All right, Mother Shirley. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Sister Dion Marie says, "Blessed wisdom." Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Brother Corey Phillips said, "We just want to chill for a little bit." <laughs> Men have to chill. Say that again, First Lady. Men have to chill and relax. They got to be left alone. When they get home from work, had a long day, let them, let them wind down. Then it's just, they'll, they have no problems with taking care of your needs emotionally. My you gotta God. got to give them a moment. Brother Corey Phillips hit something there. Yeah. We just want to chill for a little bit. Yeah. That's all. When we get home, don't don't bring us all the family problems. The dog got to go to the hospital. This and that. The, the, the catfish are uh, hell. We don't want to hear all that. I just said something right there. The catfish broken down. Did y'all get it? It's ludicrous. All right. All right. Uh, Mother Rosie Greer just said, amen, amen. Mother Barnett is just cracking up. She got all laughing faces. Uh, Sister Yolanda Brown says, amen. Let's see here. Minister Stott says, come on, Bishop Fletch. We're not hitting nobody. I'm running for a quick breathe. <laughs> Mr. Shatai got me cracking up. Oh, I love the comments tonight. Minister Shatai, I will repeat this what she said. Minister Shatai said, come on, Bishop Fletch. We're not hitting nobody. I'm running for a quick breathe. <laughs> I love my church family, First Lady. I do. We're going to laugh at new life. We're going to enjoy this life. Mother Barnett said, keep the fire lit. I like that. Mother Barnett over there in Panama said, keep it lit. Uh, uh, Minister Yolanda Brown said, Ike Turner, eat the cake, anime. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Minister Yolanda, Minister Yolanda said, Ike Turner, eat the cake, anime. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Oh. Wanda Lee said, preach, apostle. Praise the Lord. Oh, Sister Ellen Moore said, the devil is a lie. You, you know the devil is a lie. First, uh, stars, Minister Star said, talk, Bishop. Amen. Amen. The date night is excellent. Amen. Uh, Mother Shirley Neal. Amen. Minister Tom once again says, leave them alone. Give them some space. Right. So she's quoting Brother Corey and First Lady. Give us time. Give your husband. Give your boy. Don't call him soon as he get home. Well, why you ain't call me? You've been off work for 20 minutes. Oh, my God. Y'all tripping. Somebody said they tripping. They tripping. Ungodly behavior. <laughs> Mother Barnett said, ungodly behavior. Listen, I believe that if you take all the advice that all of us have given tonight, <laughs> there's going to be a rekindling and a resurgence of passion in the married life if you need it. And for those of you who are just finding a boyfriend, just finding a girlfriend, remember what we said tonight. You can't you can't rest on your laurels. Always keep it fresh and always and I'm gonna use the kids' words today. Keep it lit. If you keep it lit, you won't have to worry about trying to find the fire. <laughs> Can I say it, Star? Keep it lit. Uh, hey, Mr. Todd. Mr. Todd, she is going. Mr. Todd is going. Deacon Raj, where you at, Deacon Raj? Listen, I've enjoyed this setting tonight. I hope you all have. It's an hour and 38 minutes in. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Just wanted to give some words of wisdom. And I wanted you all to share in what you thought would make for a better uh, relationship. And so I think uh, if you remember the things that we've talked about, hopefully you all are taking notes. If you haven't taken notes, just go back over. Thank God for Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we'll be this uh, teaching will be up on YouTube in about 15 minutes from now. And then uh, I need everybody to go to YouTube right now. Go switch to YouTube. Go from Facebook. Go to YouTube. Everybody, right now. Everybody, go to YouTube. I should have at least 20 some viewers on YouTube. Everybody, go to YouTube. Come off of Facebook. Go to YouTube. Everybody, go to YouTube right now. Everybody go to YouTube. Bishop Fletch. Type in Bishop Fletch. Go to YouTube right now. Type in Bishop Fletch. 
If you're going to see me live, and I want y'all to put some comments in. Come on, subscribe to the channel and press like. Come on, everybody go. Leave Facebook because I'm getting ready to cut Facebook off. So y'all going to have to go. I'm cutting Facebook off. We're going to take the offering and everything over on YouTube. Everybody go to YouTube. Bishop Fletch. Go to YouTube. Type in Bishop Fletch. You don't see it? Bishop Fletch. No. Type in Bishop Fletch. Keep moving down. You're going to see me. I'm live. I'm live. Come on, y'all. Get off of Facebook. Go. Get get. Bishop Fletch. Type in Bishop Fletch on YouTube. I was in Google. Go to YouTube. YouTube. Go to YouTube. Get off of Facebook and go to YouTube. I'm getting ready to cut off on Facebook. Wait, 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 Bishop. Wait, wait. Go to YouTube. Press like. Press like so I know you're on. And then type some in. I can see your responses on YouTube now. Type some in. Say, I'm here, Bishop. Type it in. Amen. Subscribe. Press subscribe. Press the subscribe button and then press like. Come on. Come on. Come on. Press the like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Everybody get off of Facebook. Get off of Facebook. Go to YouTube. Get off of Facebook. Go to YouTube. I don't see nobody typing in nothing on the comments page in the comment section. Type something in. Type in, I'm here. Somebody type it in now. Type it in. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. I see Deacon Rods is on. Deacon Rods. Big Rod said, I'm here. I see you, Deacon. Uh, Sister Ian is there. Come on. Wait, Subscribe. Wait, wait. Type something in so I know you're in the house. Come on, YouTube. Let's get these views up on YouTube. Press like and subscribe. Press like and subscribe. I'm getting ready to go off of Facebook. Wait, wait, wait. Get ready to go off of Facebook. Y'all better get on over here. Get on over here. Come on over to YouTube. I say come on over to YouTube. I'm coming off of Facebook right now. Oh, my God. This is so I don't know what I'm doing. Honey. Go to YouTube. Type I'm in Bishop that. Fletch. We're just trying to and press like and subscribe. Press like and subscribe. Come on, y'all. And then comment. Why you got to comment after? I don't know. It's not allowing us. Wilbur Morris, I see you. I see you, Wilbur. You see mine? I don't see you, Fletcher. Fletcher, I don't. I see your like. You press like. Fletcher, you press like, First Lady. Come on. Get off of Facebook and come on over to YouTube. Join the party over here. Join the party on YouTube. And when you get over here, do like Brother Wilbert Morris, Deacon Rod, Sister Ina. All you have to do is like. You have to do a comment after the video's over. No, I'm live. You can chat. You can chat with me live. God bless. You got some stuck on your computer. Won't let you do it. <laughs> You got a bug, first lady. You got a bug over there. Oh, God. Yolanda Brown, where you at? Some people don't know what they're doing, but it takes me. All right, all right. I'm going to be patient. I got love is patience. Somebody said love is patience. All right, so let's go. Okay, somebody just came on. Love is kind, love is patient. Compassion. Now I know some of my older, some of my, oh, my mamas, they might be on Facebook. They ain't going to YouTube. They ain't doing all that. All right. So let's pray now. Put your prayer request in. We've done for the night. Let's put the prayer request in. I want to pray. I want to pray for anything that you have a problem with, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your relationship, whether you want to find, you want a husband to find you, you want a wife, uh, you want your finances to get better. Sometimes our finances strain our love life. So you got to seek, sometimes you got to, you know, seek higher education to get a better job. Sometimes it's starting another business to create extra money. So, you know, you got to uh, find a way to create income. Sometimes uh, this marriages and relationships just go through just because of income problems. And so uh, let us be aware of that. Right. Uh, money uh, is sexy. Okay, I just said something right there. I don't care what you say. Money is sexy. That's right. That's right. Money is sexy. It is. Right. Money is sexy. Uh, I know uh, when I'm able to do 
for first lady, uh, she finds me very attractive. I just said something right there. I said, when I'm able to do stuff for first lady, she finds me very attractive. The other year, year be. And, and so money is sexy. Amen. How you doing, Sister <laughs> Betty McFadden? All right. All right. Let me start. I gotta go, but let me start praying. Father God, I thank you for all of the families represented here on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for the obedience of the people coming over to uh, 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 Facebook. And I give you praise and I give you glory now. And I thank you, Lord, for your continued yes, love God. and support yes, uh, and your power and giving me divine wisdom to give to you. We thank you, Lord, right now, number one, that our spirits are in line with you. Because we know if our spirits and souls are in line with you, that you're going to give us sweet sleep. You're going to give us peace in our souls. And money can buy peace. Money can buy joy. And we thank you, Lord, right now that as we are agreeing with your spirit and walking with you, you're touching lives from Atlanta to South Carolina, from South Carolina to New York, from New York to Africa, from Africa to India, from India to Las Vegas, from Las Vegas to Panama, from Panama to St. Croix, from St. Croix to Detroit, from Detroit to California, from California to Idaho, from Idaho to Missouri, from Missouri to uh, 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 St. Louis, Missouri. We thank you, Lord, right now. Touch down in Memphis, Tennessee. Touch down in Mississippi. Touch down in Alabama. Touch down in Louisiana. Touch down, Father, hallelujah, in, in, in Idaho and Mexico. Touch down in Peru. Touch down in the Philippines. Touch down, Lord, and move by your spirit in Atlanta. Move right now, Father, for your people. Now, as you move in our souls and give us peace and give us sweet sleep tonight, Continue to keep our bodies whole and healthy. Continue to keep us whole and healthy. No pain in our joints, no back pains, no chest pains, no headaches. No, uh, we rebuke high blood pressure. We rebuke sugar, by di sugar diabetes. We rebuke all forms of sickness. Amen. Melanoma, uh, 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 growths on the body, uh, tumors of all kinds. We rebuke them, dissolve them right now in the name of Jesus miraculously. We rebuke cancer of all kinds. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for Sister Dion, Marie. Lord, we bless you right now, Father. We bless you and we praise your mighty name for a first lady, for amen. All of the saints of God, Elder Osagara, Elder Eleanor, Mother Barnett, Sister Le uh, uh, Aisha Thomas, uh, Sister Lisa Dixon, Evangelist West, Bishop Johnny Moore. Thank you for Apostle Richard the Younger. Thank you for Sister Wanda Lee, Minister uh, uh, Shatan, Deacon Raj, Deacon Ferris, Deaconess Ferris. We thank you, Lord, for Mother Greer. Amen. Minister Monica Greer. Thank you, Lord, right now for Sister Tutu Thompson. Amen. Sister Queen. Amen. Brother Gregory. Lord, thank you for Brother Jimmy. Thank you for uh, 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 Brother Strother, Eric Strothers. Amen. We thank you, Lord, right now. Move for your people. Move, Yolanda Brown. Move, God, right now. Move, uh, 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 Star Fletcher, Youth Pastor Steve. Move right now, Dr. Wanda. Move for the Fletchers and the Davises. Move, God, in Star Wars. We thank you right now for Mooney family. Heal, Brother Mooney, Lord. We thank you and we call his name out to you. We ask that you heal his body, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Brother Mooney, Lord, in Stockton, California, we speak healing from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We speak healing, amen, for uh, Sister amen, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, with a lady, Patty. We thank you, Lord, right now that you're moving by your power and moving by your spirit for that young lady, Brother Corey Phillips. Bless him, Lord. We thank you for it right now. Bless him and his daughter, and we give you praise. Sister Ellen Morris, her and her husband and her son, bless their life. Mother Shirley, we thank you for it right now. Move financially for every name we called out, for every family we called out right now. Move for Sister Debbie Warback. We thank you, amen, for Sister Betty Fadden and, her, and, and Brother Johnny McFadden. Heal him, touch his body, restore him 100-fold. And we thank you for the blessing, Lord. Your word said that by your stripes we are healed. By your stripes we are healed. We give you praise and honor and glory. Now for every offering, now sow your seeds right now. Sow your seed offering. I'm asking y'all to sow a seed. No less than a $20 offering this night. Amen. Give no less than $20 offering. And if you don't have the 20, give as close as you can to 20. As close as you can to 20. 
Amen. And I'm getting ready to pray for the seed offering right now. My my sister from the show, Sister Antoinette Rush. That's my sister. My God, she been nursing my she nursed my kids uh 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 back way back when we were in Lancaster. Steve would go to first they would take Steve to the uh, uh hospital, and he was about five six years old. And my sister be working. She's a nurse at the emergency room, and she takes Steve in, treat him like he was her own. And first they say, one of your friends from school is a nurse. I said, who? She said, Ann Russ. And her husband and, and myself, best friends uh, in junior high school, amen, in high school, we're going, going up, amen, we, we're uh, uh, very good friends, best friends, me, him, and his, uh, our other friend, Derek, uh, Derek, uh, brother Derek in, in junior high, we were best friends, always hanging out, and come to find out my sister from the Shaw married my best friend from junior high school, amen, one of my best friends, and so it was just a blessing to know her, and now she's she always chiming in, she uh, participate in things uh, uh, with First Lady and purchasing shoes from First Lady, so I pray now total blessings over my sister Ann Rush, her husband, Brother Robbie, her family, her grandchildren, their kids, uh, her dad, everyone. I speak continuous healing and the blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you for Sister Vanessa Bell in Las Vegas. Thank you. Amen. We pray the blessing. Amen. Dorothy Hester. Amen. Uh, Auntie Dorothy, God bless you. Amen. And uh, Uncle Hester. Amen. God bless y'all, Stockton. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. We curse every seed of sickness. We curse every seed of poverty and, and, and lack. We come against you in Jesus' name. And we declare that finances be released supernaturally from the government, from settlements, from a long lost inheritance. We speak it in the name of Jesus. Somebody got to get a call. Somebody got to get an email. Somebody got to get an old fashioned letter in the mail saying you own property. Uh, somebody, your grand, great grandmama left you some property. Your, your, your granddaddy, your great auntie, you're the only survivor left you this money. In the name, I speak it over everyone watching me. I speak long lost inheritance in the name of Jesus. I speak respirate, uh, uh, what do they call it? Not respiration, but uh, uh, what's the word? Y'all know the word. Uh, 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 um, I can't pronounce the word right now. Reparations. Reparations. Amen. I speak that they come through our U.S. government in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who family members have been enslaved. Amen. Amen. Uh, grand, grand, great, great, grands. I speak the blessing in Jesus' name. I speak that you shall own homes and cars and houses and land paid off in the name of Jesus. Uh, credit cards paid off. Credit scores, I speak, going up in the name. Those who are giving in the offering tonight, I speak your credit score. Go up to 650. Go up to 670. Go up to 680. Go up to 700. Somebody credit score, get ready to go up to 740. I speak it in the name of Jesus. Somebody got a credit score, get ready to happen. In the next two months, it's going to go up to 780. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak credit scores going up supernaturally. I speak that old debt fall off, bad debt fall off your credit report in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it's going to be done supernaturally. It's going to be done supernaturally. I speak it right now. Somebody business is getting ready to go up, get up off the ground. You're going to make about 10,000 a week in the name of Jesus. Somebody business is going to make 10, you're going to clear 10,000 a week. Uh -huh. What do you mean clear? You're going to profit. You're going to pay your people off pay the services, pay for your product, and you're going to have 10000 sitting there clear. In the name of somebody, going to have 5000 a week. In the name of somebody, going to have 2000 a week. Amen. Clear after you paid all your people. Father, I thank you right now. Somebody going to have 50000 a week. I speak it over the people of God right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody going to make a have a job making 100000 a year. Somebody going to have a job making 70000 a year. Somebody going to be making $30 an hour. Somebody's getting ready to make $50 an hour. Somebody's getting ready to make $40. I speak it over your lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Elder Barrymore, God bless you, sir. Bless you and your family. Bless you and your family. I speak the blessing of the Lord. Make you rich and add no sorrow. Make you wealthy and add no sorrow. I speak relaxation. We're signing off now. It's been close to two hours. I didn't mean to take all this time. I love y'all. Sow your seed. I'm waiting for your cash app. Go to cash app, dollar sign. 
N E W L I F M I N. So you see, you some of the stuff you can't get until you sow your seed, you release it. God see your faith, your seed, and then God sit, releases the angels, the natural angels, to bless us. Amen. I've always sown seed. Oh man, you got to sow seed, a sow seed into the kingdom of God, in the work of God. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I love y'all. We love y'all. I think we had a great time. Amen. And tonight's uh, teaching was how to make, amen, your relationships better through love. How to make your relationships better through love. How to make your relationship better through love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love rethink things. Love adjust uh, as one of our viewers. I think it was Brother Wilbur Morris said, I think, or Corey Phillips. Love adjust. Amen. Love rethink things. Love don't have to stay the same. I find out what my mate likes now. Find out what he likes now. He maybe he liked that 10 years ago, but he don't like it now. Come on, find out and get the spice back. Go somewhere different. Go on a date. Date night is fun. Date night is sexy. Amen. Keep the fire going. Be kind to your new boyfriend. Be kind to your new girlfriend. Don't be a pushover, but be kind. Okay, I just said something right there. I love y'all for free. You can see these teachings again on Facebook and YouTube as I sign off. Amen. We pray the blessing of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow. Peace to you. May you sleep like little babies. That's all night. Not the babies that wake up in the middle of the night, but all night through. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Without a care in the world, God's going to take care of your business. Love y'all. See you.